to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. <laughs> My name is Brian. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me collect myself. Such a good start to this episode. <clears throat> sorry, Monica. My name is Will. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> as you guys know, we try and keep this as family friendly as possible. And right before we started recording, Will uttered a phrase that we can only say was inappropriate. Oh God! And I hope it's in there. Oh, don't. I'm gonna have to cut oh, it out. I hope, <laughs> I hope you don't. I have to. The timing. I'll send you the version with perfect. The... <clears throat> Guys, welcome to the episode. Uh, we've got a fun episode for you today. But Sorry. before we get into that, I do want to mention we have a giveaway going on right now on Instagram. So all you have to do is go check out the original post repost it and tag our page in it and also follow our page and you are entered to win four booster packs of masters 25 absolutely free we will ship them to you from card kingdom so that way hopefully you can get them sooner that's the plan yeah um so if you want to enter be sure to do that uh again super simple super fun and good luck to you all yes i'm back now are you Um, good will has resolved hey guys Anyway, the schedule for today. Uh, we have our random card of the day, of course, kicking us off. We're going to very quickly mention the Brawl format. Uh, just talk about what it is and get you guys intro into it and hopefully get your opinions on it. Uh, and then we're going to talk about the state of modern. We've had some time with Bloodbraid as well as Jace. Uh, and so we thought now's a good time to take a look and see what they've done to the format. We also have our question of the week and then, of course, our crack packs with our goal cards in mind. So... Ooh. How exciting. Ooh. I'm ready for Dominaria, man. I'm Dude, ready for a new set. Absolutely. Um, all right, so random card of the day in three, two, one ish. It's Spirit Shackle. <laughs> this was originally printed in fourth edition. Ah, I see. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so it's two black for an enchant creature. Uh, put a negative negative zero negative two counter on target creature you know, every time it becomes tapped. The most common counter in the game. Yeah. <laughs> these counters remain even if spirit shackle is removed so it slowly kills a creature every time it's tapped is the idea or it just kills a very weak creature every time that creature or when that creature is i kind of don't hate this card honestly it's like removal yeah real i mean it is removal yeah but i mean it's fine i kind of don't hate this especially for fourth edition this i'm yeah def- this kind of seems like it'd be pretty good actually and legends those yeah. are its two printings. I can, yeah. I'm kind of okay with that. Like, I mean, it's like dead weight, right? Like, it's yeah. basically the same, except yeah. they still get theoretically an attack in with it or something like that. That's the thing, is that, yeah, they can attack, but they will eventually, depending on the creature's toughness, lose it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if this is pretty bad removal. It's, yeah. But, I mean, it's... It's fine. It's okay. Yeah. Eh. I mean, that's about all there is to say about it, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, it's in limited... Probably at this time, it would make sense, I think, probably to take it because it is going to kill any of the lower level creatures, no problem. And eventually it can deal with, theoretically deal with, a bomb of some sort. Um, Mm -hmm, But mm -hmm. it's just so slow, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. If you're playing a slower deck with a bigger payoff at the end, I think this is fine. Sure. As a deterrent. It's a deterrent, Um, not really removal. It's legal and vintage, so maybe you'll see it there. (laughs) Um, Anyway... (laughs) <laughs> all the jokes <laughs> this is gonna be a fun episode oh, oh good no times. you'll never see it in vintage <laughs> or anywhere hey all i'm saying is oh. if i ran vintage spirit shackles my go-to removal Man, spell didn't know the goal was to never win a match of vintage <laughs> didn't know oh, that yeah. was the did new you thing. not know no that's what brawl is it's like golf <laughs> for magic like golf. <laughs> is to never win a match I want yes. my pro points to be as low as possible. Perfect. That's my goal. You can get there with your very with own spirit shackles. <laughs> All right, uh, guys, let's move on and talk about Brawl. So wait, if you don't know, I Wizards don't. very recently announced that they are putting a new format into motion called Brawl. And right. what this is is essentially a commander, but for standard cards only. So it's if you're a negative person, you're going to say this is a restricted commander. If you're a theoretically positive person, this is a new way to use your standard cards in hopefully a fun way. Sorry. Um, yeah. 
Fun I was fact, wondering what your fun fact about reaction me. would be. He didn't know what this was. I had no idea what Brawl was. I had meant to read an article about it, decided I'll do that later. <laughs> that was like two weeks ago, and I haven't. Hasn't been two weeks, has it? <laughs> uh, as of recording this, no, but I, I embellish for effect. <clears throat> oh. Um, so, okay. Yeah. 100 cards. Yeah. Singleton. Singleton. Standard only. Standard only. So just to clarify, what they're doing to kind of promote this... Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which I do agree with them doing this actually, uh, maybe not for the reasons that they're doing it, mm-hmm. but what they're doing is at pre-release for Dominaria, you will be able to pick up a pre-ordered box of Dominaria, which is something that they've never done before. Okay. So that lets you on the night that you finally mm-hmm. get to play and open the set, you actually do get to take home a free, or not a free, but a pre-ordered booster box of right. the set. In addition... They will be adding a commander or brawl creature uh, as a buy a box kind of promo thing. Okay. Um, and that's the only way Isn't to get this promo. No, no, no. It's uh, just something. I don't have the. I need to have this pulled up. Oh, yeah. What am I thinking? Really Galta was up. the judge card. I'm, uh, Dominaria I'm dumb. promo. Galta um, was the judge card I was excited about because the art was dope. But... Oh, I should have clicked on that. No. Oh. no. Um, but basically, it's the only place that you'll be able to actually get this promo. Ooh, lovely. Uh-huh. That's not what I'm looking at, though. Those are nice, though. <laughs> they are nice. Um, so it's Fire Song and Sunspeaker. Ah. And this is going to be, the again, the only way that you can get this card is by pre-ordering a box of Dominaria. I did like this. Uh, so there is a limited print run for this. It's actually, I mean, uh, here's the thing. Brawl, probably pretty good. <laughs> I like it outside of Brawl. I like it in, Do you? in Commander with a Boros theme. Um, Boros is notoriously the worst color combo. For yeah, the commander too. Yeah, but there's big, stompy, scary things. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and I like spells that have like I don't know. It's just fun. It's yeah, fun. no, definitely. Yeah. I just like it because it'll be fun. Well, we'll probably have the yeah. promo up, but really quick, Fire right. Song and Sunspeaker. Let's just go through it. It's a four six for four, a mm-hmm. red and a white. Uh, it's a legendary creature, Minotaur Clear. No, it's a four six for six, not for is four. It? Oh, if it was me. for four, it'd be for four. A red and busted. white is what a, Did you? I'm yeah. sorry, I missed that. This man. Uh, I'm distracted by. It states things. red instant and sorcery spells mm. you control have life link. Your lightning bolt gains you life now. Uh, when a white. Yep. <laughs> instant or sword. There's like a watermark on the card that makes it really hard. When a white instant or sorcery spell causes you to gain life. Fire Song and Sun Speaker deals one damage to target creature or player. Deals three damage. Three damage. Just kidding. I can't read because <laughs> of the stupid watermark. Um, there's just a... Actually, I mean, that seems cool. That's there's good. definitely a unlimited combo here with this and um, the Boros Reckoner. Hmm. Right? Because you would... Causes you to gain life. Yeah, so if you make him indestructible somehow mm-hmm. and you, let's say, lightning helix him mm-hmm. so he'll never die, but you're dealing damage. Yeah. With, you know, and you're gaining life. You just gain unlimited life, basically. Do you? Right? Is that how that works? I believe, because they've got lifelink, so you're dealing three. No, I'm sorry, you need That's to duplicate not how it. That's that works. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm missing a card. You need to duplicate it. I'm missing... um. There's two more cards to make this combo happen. Basically, it's a ridiculous combo. Oh, God. Yeah, but it's Commander. Come on. You can do it. Yeah, but I mean. <laughs> oh, please, no. It's possible. <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, mean, it's sweet. I'm happy it's a Boros Commander. Again, just because generally speaking, Boros doesn't get a lot of love. So I'm pretty happy about that. And he is pretty good. Um, what, what is that? Anyway, so you're really harping on this. I'll throw one. it on Facebook later. Yeah, when that's I fine. Remember what it is. Um, but anyway, no, yeah. So brawl is commander, but for standard yeah, players. Yeah. Okay. Is so essentially, let's, what let's this talk is. About that for yeah. Let's talk about it. Um, so, what are your thoughts? I think there's not enough cards in the pool to make that happen. Uh, I don't think that's the problem. Oh, that's totally the problem. Like you're gonna have such boring decks. Well, okay. Yeah, I think that's that is. So the thing that I don't like about this is commander is notorious for being the like non restricted restricted crazy format where anything can happen right and then you take it and you give it a card pool of like a few sets and it's that's like that's the thing 
There's not enough to I make I mean, there's enough cards to make decks, but it's like, yeah, they're, they're not going to be good decks. That's so the like, thing. That's not, the problem isn't making decks, but... <laughs> we don't need another standard-based format. Sorry about it. I already don't like the regular standard Honestly, format. no. <laughs> unless you want to add another 120 to 200 yeah. cards to a block. I'm saying go back to the three-block yeah. structure. You know what I mean? Mm. And then, okay. Like, okay. If there were... Like return to Ravnica standard that season, mm -hmm. um, so good. I mean, it was pretty fun. Actually. It was a fun one. Um, wasn't the best, but it was fun. No, but like that, the flavor, all of it worked. Yeah. I guess together. Yeah, and yeah. if there were 30, 40 more cards per set, there, mm -hmm. I think you've got argument to say that there's enough stuff to do. But I don't think that with two blocks per set, yeah, you're gonna have enough. Like, it's going to feel weird. You're going to... It's just going to be like a lower-powered commander, which is not fun. No, like, it's not fun at all. That's my problem with it, <clears throat> it, is... I mean, we see it all the time. Like, standard, the reason the cards don't hold up in value or anything like that is because they rotate out and nobody cares about them after that. Right. And now you're just adding a format that's just repeating that process. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I mean, sure, it's commander for standard, but it's like... It's still standard, so it's like within that limitation, yeah. it makes it so much less exciting. Um, I very, think. Sorry. No, no, no. I was just gonna say I think that um, this is potentially a way that wizards might be trying to add a little bit more value to standard sets by adding another format that's focused around the standard sets, which is whatever. But like, it's still a rotating. It's still gonna inher inherently have that problem of the cards rotate out and then they're not worth anything. Exactly. So like. I don't think that... I hope that that's not the reason for them doing this because that's not solving anything, I mm -hmm. don't think. No. Um, here's anyway. here's the thing. Um, oh, shoot. I had my point. Oh, I got it. Mm. I was going to say, it's not like... I'm sure that the Wizards playtest team or whoever came up with this aren't the first people to think, hey, let's oh, play yeah, Commander yeah. with just standard Definitely. cards. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. But the reason you don't do it is because it'd be boring. It's... Yeah, someone's had to think before, and this is speculation. It's not fair. It's probably not even true. Someone's had to think. Hey, what if we just use standard cards? <laughs> it resolves. Bring you fake facts. <laughs> fake news. Fake news. More fake news. <laughs> but no, really. Almost a year now. <sighs> just so you guys know. Man. Yeah. Yeah. We got some time. It'll be a year. one more month, and it'll be a year. Dang. I'd never remember anniversaries except for when I was. It's married. because we have analytics that I can look back at the, <laughs> the start date of the analytics. There you go. Very smart. It's the only um, reason I know. My point is. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> that you could have done this before. There's yeah. a reason we haven't. It's because we have Commander. Yeah. And it's not as if they're going to make this a competitive format, have brawl tournaments or anything. They might. They don't have Commander tournaments, though. No, they won't. Not sanctioned, not Wizards. But if, if you were going to do. A brawl tournament? Why not give people commander tournaments instead? People would much rather just have regular commander tournaments. Exactly. Um, so if you, yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like the best idea to me. It seems like a reach, you know. Definitely. It's like they're just really trying to like Definitely. build up standard. And I heard something recently that that sort of caught my my attention is people were talking about wizards and their promotion and their marketing for the sets that or the for the formats that they want to see people play mm -hmm. instead of marketing this the formats that people actually want to play and so yeah. for instance we see a lot of standard marketing and standard push it's all this great stuff and standard by all means is definitely a popular format don't get me wrong it's the most yeah. accessible it's the most um, played. which is has to do a lot with why it's played so much but like people mm -hmm. do play a lot of standard i'm not saying that but a lot of people still play modern, play commander. Commander's mm -hmm. the wide most, I believe, the most played format. If I'm not mistaken, no, standard standard is the is most standard played. the most played. Yeah, standard's the most played. Um, fan favorite, then we'll say, is commander for That's sure. That's definitely true. Um, and so, but they're not doing much to push these formats. It's all about standard, standard, standard. And now mm -hmm. they're just giving us a new version of standard, <laughs> and it's like, right? I don't want standard anymore. <laughs> I well no I, I do want standard I just mean like I don't want more standard let's standard push he, it out of that here's the thing standard needs to be a format in magic yeah but it needs to yeah. remain the structure it is I believe 
And Brawl's not replacing Standard by any means. No. But you don't need to not. add another, like, twin to Standard. <laughs> Mm-mm. Standard needs to stay standard because standard exists to test magic players in their ability to adapt to changing circumstance, mm-hmm. which this is going to be a reach maybe, but just like any sport or e-sport or other game, there changes happen. <coughs> the test of skill, <coughs> true skill, true like um, legacy skill, I guess, what keeps you in it? Is your ability to grow and change with that? Yeah. Um, if I were going to plug the greatest football team ever, the Patriots, um, I'd say that pigskin is that a thing? Pigskin, <laughs> check. But the great <laughs> teams, the great organizations, the great players always adapt to change. They don't stay in a rut. That's why standard needs to exist. Is because we keep getting new cards. Mm-hmm. Old cards are gone. It changes. You have to reassess retool every time a new set comes out you have to update yourself on that exactly. set exactly that's but but you can't complicate that too much yeah because then you can't grow your brand another thing with marketing mm. can't complicate it because it pushes people out another thing um you can never dictate to <coughs> your audience what they want to see yeah forever you can do it at first that's how you get popular that's how you say if you're for instance, Blizzard. Here, you've played MOBAs before. You've played shooters before. We married them. Here's Overwatch. It's mm. awesome. You should go play it. You know, you do that in the beginning. Well, it's like a seesaw pattern, right? Like in the beginning, the game defines itself. The players yes. come to the game, yes. and then they learn, and then they get better at it, whatever. Right. Once more people start coming to the game and mm-hmm. finding new ways to play it, it sort of tilts Mm-hmm. in the other direction where the players and the people involved in the game actually are the ones who dictate okay what do we want to see what do we want to make happen right and that's just how it goes that's where commander well edh and commander i guess came from exactly you know what i mean exactly the players said hey we play this game this way it's really fun and wizards took that and said all right well we can market things to you specific yeah. to this desire and they did it it's perfect for instance for example yeah commander says <laughs> commander sets they have been getting better and better better they're some of the most well-received sets these last ones not as much but they were still good the right. thing about the commander sets is and it's pretty unanimous across the board you ask anybody what's the best like out of the box uh product that wizards makes generally speaking people will say the commander decks yeah. have always been solid mm-hmm. they may not be amazing but they're always solid you yeah. could you could buy a commander product straight from Wizards mm-hmm. out of the box, take it to a commander night just for fun, whatever. You may not win every game, you may not win the tournament, but you, you have a game. competitive-ish yeah. deck that you'll be able to get through a few mm-hmm. games with and enjoy yourself. That's great. Mm-hmm. But then we see like standard right now looking at Planeswalker decks. Nobody wants Planeswalker decks. No. That's and why those, we have challenger decks, arguably. We're getting challenger decks. But. Right. And and to be fair, decks like Planeswalker decks are tailored towards new players. They are, um, yeah. Which but. is which is which is fine. There needs to be again product that's accessible, simple. You can grab it easy, whatever. Yeah. Uh another point I wanted to make is that it's not as if commander products don't make wizards money. <laughs> yeah. You see the card Atroxa, the stock card Atroxa mm-hmm. selling for like 20, 30 bucks. Yeah. Because she's so good. She's such a powerful commander. And wizards can take a hold of that. That's a total crash cash grab to make commander specific cards be so good. Mm-hmm. Um, all that to say is I feel like they are complicating the mixture with brawl yeah um in that instead of tapping into an already existing well-received well-loved well-respected format they're making they're bastardizing it almost it's not a swear it's a word um (laughs) yes (laughs) and they're just they're making it i don't want to say silly but it kind of seems gimmicky it seems really gimmicky to me it seems like it's a money grab for wizards exactly because you're gonna have two color commanders in brawl brawlers i guess maybe we call them whatever (laughs) two colors their card pool is so limited yeah so limited but in the entire span of magic like okay it's not super limited technically there's probably going to be like 400 500 cards that a two color commander could get maybe more yeah probably but think about how many of those cards are going to suck well that's the thing like I don't want to have to see a brawl player put the freaking shadow scale or and let's the two one that's like, unblockable in his deck. That's stupid. And we've been harping on this for a little bit, so we'll like 
I guess fairly quickly move on. But no, like won't. the thing about it is fundamentally Commander is already a format that takes a long time. And that's with <laughs> super powerful cards that can win you the game very quickly. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine playing a full on commander game but only using like standard legal card like honestly sit down and think about that? No. Instead of playing Doomblade to kill a creature, gotta wait for that whatever five mana kill spell impale is it four mana yeah gotta wait for true. impale like come on now like i just this <laughs> could if they really wanted to make this work this could force them to print bigger and better standard sets which would be cool which would be fine but also don't have the faith that they're gonna do that right i was gonna say but <laughs> like that's the they issue they exist in their current form for a reason they can't be yeah. super strong they can't be too big because then the value of cards just skyrockets, and yeah. that's not fair to, to other players, and that kind of takes away from the beauty of standard and its simplicity. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know. Plus, I don't know. Nobody likes change, guys. Just let it be. I like change. Let standard be. Um, I yeah, like I don't know. I'm not super change. stoked about brawl. Um, it's something that we will probably visit at some point, uh, as in like maybe play it. I don't really want to. If you guys want to see I it. will try it. I'll try it, yeah. Um, it just seems okay. like it would not go that well. It's going to be fun. Magic is magic. fun. Right. But it's not going to be Commander. It's mm, it's like a metaphor that I can't say. Uh, it's like one thing when you really wanted another thing. And it's not as good. It's like having just a plain Hershey's bar when you really want a Hershey's bar with almonds. There you go. And we'll end it there. All right, guys. Uh, moving what, on to what's modern. What's that bar? <laughs> Mr. Goodfellow? What's that bar? Mr. Goodbar. That's it. Mr. Goodbar. I love Mr. Goodbar. Oh, dude. Right? Right? My grandpa used to buy boxes of Mr. Goodbars. Just keep Let's them in the fridge. Let's go get boxes of Mr. Goodbars. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'll be yeah, trying to get no, up and walk real. away and my chair tipped over. You can see I have gym shorts on and I have like a nice jacket on, but I have my gym shorts underneath, as always. Yeah, he's got a jacket on. And I have socks. Because my feetsies were cold. All right, so moving on to modern. You're like a really pathetic golem. <laughs> my feetsies. My feetsies so were shut. cold. All right, sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> moving away from Brawl for a moment. Lots of feelings there. Hopefully that forever. That I didn't realize existed. We'll <laughs> see. Um, let's talk about modern for a second. Mm-hmm. So a lot of speculation by us two as well, about oh, yeah. how uh, the unbannings would affect modern. Blood Braid, Jace, you know them, you love them, you hate them, maybe. Um, Probably hate them. A lot of questions I had running into <coughs> uh, deck lists, running mm. into modern uh, events. How and We just got a slew of them. It's that season. So I wanted to know how they were affecting the format. This is going to be a short segment, because I'm happy to say <laughs> that they haven't really changed the format at all. Which... Credit where credit's due, that's kind of what we said from the beginning. Um, a little. I was, close I was worried to about Judd. I was a little worried about Blood Braid, but like, mm-hmm. I think pretty much it was like, okay, it's probably not going to be that big of a deal. Right. <laughs> I, I think if we look back to the episode where we talked about the unmannings, um, what we said about Jace was that he fits into very specific decks very well, mm-hmm. but doesn't really fit into a wide variety of decks all that well. Plus, he is a turn four play, which for the decks that he would fit in, there's really other things that you'd probably rather be doing, holding up a cryptic command, something along those lines. Right. Um, That being said, we do see Jace in some of these decks, which is great. We do see a new deck come out, which is not a new deck, but a new version of the deck, Miracles, which uh, is actually pretty sweet. We also do see it uh, hitting Taking Turns, Mm -hmm. because it can Miracle in that deck as well. Right. So it does have a lot of a little bit more reach than we initially thought, but it's definitely not taking over by any means. No. Um, which is not. what we, I mean, roughly what we Right, that expect. was our opinion of Jace, definitely. Um, Blood Braid was a little bit different. We were definitely a little bit more on the, like, okay, this could actually take things over. Mm-hmm. But I know in the episode we talked about it, think in terms of mid-range decks, which is really where we saw Blood Braid hitting the most. Jund, oh, yeah. Right. Um, the thought was that a lot of other mid-range decks would become kind of irrelevant because every mid-range deck would just want to be Jund because mm-hmm. it has it has Blood Braid, it works really well with that. Right. And so that's sort of what we expected. We do see Jund 
doing very well right now, I yep. believe, right? It took, um, I want to say <clears throat> GP Kyoto. That might be wrong. Did it win? No, it got second place. Got second. Okay. Got second. That's right. Humans beat it, you yep. mentioned. It might not be Kyoto. It might be something else. <laughs> um, um, so we do see Jun doing very well. It's not taking over by any means. No. Um, and we are actually, which I did not necessarily expect, we are seeing Blood Braid hit different decks a little more. Which Phoenix, I think is interesting. Me, GP Phoenix. GP Phoenix. Uh, yeah, Kyoto hasn't gone on uh, top eight yet. Gotcha. Um, but you're right. No, Blood Braid is in mm -hmm. a variety of decks. Um, what's really interesting is that just as the time um, Blood Braid was on ban, Jace was on ban, you saw the rise in another deck, uh, Humans. Yeah. Now, people have tested Humans in a few different ways. They tested them before the unbannings and were kind of successful. Some people talked about the rise of a five-color <clears> Human <throat> Shell. Um, and some have come to fruition. Some are very fast. Yeah. Some go wide very quickly. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned Blood Braid in other decks. That's why I wanted to bring this up. Uh, Jerry Thompson piloted a five-color Humans. Well, no, four, technically. He cut out black. Gotcha. Um, and he ran Blood Braid. Very interestingly. Kind of makes sense, though. Yeah, in a way it does. Um, and it was very successful. Yeah. His version is a much more mid-range deck. Mm -hmm. It just happens to have a really cool tool with, with Blood Braid. Uh, and that's kind of what other decks have done. Instead of just disappear into the night, like I thought they might, because right. Jund is so powerful, they've used Blood Braid. That was In a just weird different way manners. to say that. Yeah, Sorry, no, let me try I... that again. Use Blood Braid. <laughs> Blood Braid. Blood Braid? Blood. Blood Braid. Blood Braid. Uh, they've used the scary elf man. Lady? Why do we do weird things? It's a lady, right? Yes. It's a lady in the art? Yes. I forget things. Anyway. <laughs> they use Blood Braid uh, to just kind of stay relevant. Um, and all that to say is that there are still... There are still plenty of mid-range decks out there right now. Like yeah, you see, absolutely. Yeah, they're kind of uh, touted as uh, aggro decks, but there is one aggro deck that I told you about that was really exciting. Oh heck yeah! So um, I just want to mention this deck really quick. We're yeah. not like going in depth with this by any means, but it's a super sweet deck. So it's Gruel yeah. Aggro, which you may notice we've talked about a deck called Gruel Aggro with Blood Braid Elf. Um, so the one we did was sort of a cascade theme. Definitely. It was very much about playing things like Burning Tree Emissary, Goblin mm -hmm. Guide, all these really very cheap, efficient creatures that mm -hmm. give you some sort of little bonus, and then into a cascade card, which lets you get even more of those for free. Right. Um, Violent Outburst and Blood Braid were the two payoff cards. So a lot of good stuff. Very, very uh, hyper-aggressive, I oh, would yeah. say. Oh, very yeah. much a go-wide strategy, though. Um, so with... The deck that I saw today, it was a ball lightning cascade with blood braid deck. And so it ran all of the like, I'm going to deal a ton of damage real quick and then die immediately cards. So ball lightning, and I don't remember the name of it, but the color shifted green one um, from planar chaos, I believe. Uh, it ran Hellspark Elemental and a few others, just like bashers. That's all it is. Yep. Um, and so you cascade into these huge 6-1 creatures that just swing in for a ton of damage. And they all, they I believe, have trample, so they're going to get a little bit through no matter what. Um, so it's just hyper-aggressive in the same way that ours was. Just It's sort of focused on just big, stompy creatures instead of a wide variety. Groundbreaker, thank you. My pleasure. That was bothering me all day. Um, anyway, yeah, very sweet deck. I just wanted to mention it. Super, super cool. Yeah, that's really fun. Um, <clears throat> that is like a flash in the pan. Either it's going to burn down the house oh, yeah, or yeah, yeah. just fizzle. It's not going to be. I don't think it's going to be amazing, to be honest. That seems really good, though. Honestly. I mean, it's cool, but like, I don't know. It seems pretty good. Um, all that to say is that there are decks <clears throat> still competing against Blood Braid with Blood Braid. Yep. Um, it's very good. Uh, modern is still in a really, really healthy state. Yep. I think maybe even more so than before these things were unbanned. Um, you don't have a deck over 7% of the meta right now. That's great. Which is even less That's exactly than we talked about it before. Want. Yeah. Um, the next up-and-comer looks to be Death... Sh not, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> looks to be five-color humans. Yeah. Like Death Shadow. Uh, no one's really figured out how to beat them yet, necessarily. Some uh, Tron decks have a good time. Eldrazi Tron, specifically. Yeah. Because humans go wide 
But Eldrazi Tron gets so big so fast. Uh, if they can get to Tron, like, turn four, they're pretty in a pretty good position. Sure. Um, you have a good chance just to outpower humans on board. Makes sense. Um, that's You can fight a champion of the Parish pretty easily there. Um, that is, of course, cons- hopefully they don't get to Meddling Mage. Some yeah, of their, their, that's the tricky part. You know? Uh, humans has a good. They do a good job of keeping you off of cards. Yeah. With Kite Sail, Freebooter, Meddling Mage, um, Reflector Mage, stuff like that. Uh, but then having access to Ugin helps tremendously. With oh that yeah, stuff. you just board wipe it. Exactly. Um, exactly. And then they since you know. You know, I went to go to buy it. a few Meddling Mages the other day because I was like, oh, I should probably pick up some of these cards. Mm-hmm. Like twenty bucks for a Meddling Mage right now. Yep. It's it's insane. Just humans. We haven't really found that. Yeah. Thing yeah. Yet, you know. And with we'll Jerry Thompson. Time tooling decks like he often does oh yeah uh they're gonna become more tricky sure he's a dude that always pushes the envelope i feel like i like that he's ranked number eight in the world right now but he i remember back <coughs> to we were talking about ravnica mm. in standard earlier i remember back to then when he played a uh is it elemental deck that not a lot of people were playing and i remember thinking that deck is not going to be very good turns out it was pretty good nope oh. um <laughs> but the point is he played it that's true. Yeah, yeah. He played it. He didn't... I mean, it did better than I could ever do. Uh, <laughs> but he was out in, like... I can't remember if he made it to the round of eight or not. Um, even if he made it to the round of eight, that's impressive. It's already better than I oh, yeah, would definitely. have said. But I don't think he made it to the to the top eight with that deck. Um, but he was one of very few people to play a deck like that. Um, he, for a time, has tried to, like, push it. He played, um, for instance, Amonkhet... He was one of very scant few players to play mono black zombies before it was very big. I do remember that. Um, he did pretty well with it. If he I did. Remember. He won. Yeah, that's right. He, he won. did win, didn't he? Um, he's always a guy to, to push the envelope and kind of steer the format. Yeah. Um, I like that. We need people like that who are going to not just, and I I hate using the term, but not just net deck, but take a deck mm-hmm. and really refigure it into something that yeah. hopefully does something a little bit better or right. at least tries something different. So I mean, he's the guy that makes the net decks, the net decks. Yeah, basically. Pretty much. So, um, good yeah. for Jerry. We Great player. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, cool. as expected, modern, kind of just in a good well, place. Well, no, I'm surprised. I thought Bloodbraid would hurt it a lot more. It turns out it has not. Yeah. Um, it's made things... You have to consider a few more, a few more, th- yeah. a few more things. Um, turn four definitely is a huge turn in modern right now, mm-hmm. for sure. I mean, it was kind of already because exactly. of like collected company and right. stuff like that, but right. and cryptic command for the control decks, but precisely. Um, now it just kind of got two more tools on that on that end <laughs> that make it a little more impactful. Yeah, um, so it's just interesting. It just kind of speeds up the format a little bit, a little bit, which is fine. Yeah, um, I think it's great. Because I think there are plenty of decks that can capitalize on that, and mm-hmm. also decks that might want to slow down the format that can still fight it. Oh yeah, you know, definitely, definitely. You, so. Yeah, Blood Braid's not as scary as I thought it would be. So no. that's all. Uh, that's what I wanted to say. Modern, well, good. Uh, modern's good. I'm happy to see Modern in a good place still. Again, I, like I you said, I was a little glasses. worried with Blood Braid, but I overall, take off we're my in glasses a good place. when I have a point to make. Just to reiterate the point. I just kind of want to leave them off now. Hurt my eyes. Um. Moving on, guys, to the question of the week. So last week we asked, and we talked a lot about Dominaria, and we wanted to know what cards that have been spoiled that you guys were most excited about. And there were three that really popped up a lot. Uh, Mox Amber is one. To nobody's surprise, everybody's excited about this. Because it's a new Mox, Yeah. everybody's going to be hyped about it. It's by no means on the power level of the original Mox. Well, of I mean, course not. Clearly, I mean, but... Um, it does have a, a very solid place in probably every commander deck ever. Yep. Uh, yep. And I think because the huge legendary theme in Dominaria, we're going to see it in standard quite a lot as well. So yeah, I believe that's that. That's exciting. Uh, Teferi came up a couple times, uh, which you and I both are big fans of. Yes. Especially for standard control. I really like Teferi. Seems really perfect. All of the mm-hmm. abilities were just perfect for a control deck. So I'm really happy about that one. Yeah. Uh, and then Karn couple of people excited about Karn, uh, and we talked about this last time, a little underwhelming in comparison to the previous Karn. Right, well... It would be ridiculous to have expected the previous Karn or anything similar to it mm-hmm. in the new standard, we'd know that, but um, he definitely takes a different role, right? Which I think is oh, yeah. interesting. He's not the big, fat, destroy-everything guy that yeah. he once he's was. He's not a game-ender. He's now he's engine. the engine. 
which yeah. is pretty sweet. Um, so I'm happy to see it take that role. I think he'll be good. I don't think he'll be amazing. He. And that's fine. Yeah. I don't really right? have anything else to, to elaborate on there. Mm-hmm. Without playing him, I don't know. We don't know yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do like that he fits in every deck, though. That's pretty sweet. I mean, yeah, he kind of, like, nothing else uses the silver counters, right? Right. So he just kind of goes in whatever. Just kind of works. Um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know the exceptions. Yeah. We yeah. don't have to say mono red <laughs> to know the exceptions. Yes. But anyway. Um, so this week's, dude, every time you hit the camera. <laughs> I stretch my knees. The tripod is there. It's not just floating. Um, anyway, uh, this week's question of the week, guys. Brawl. Do you like Brawl or do you not like Brawl? This is a yes or no question. You can yeah. tell us why. We Please do want to know why. Please tell us but, why. Um, I'm sure there's something I What are your thoughts thought on Brawl? Yeah, I mean, do, do you think it's going like... to be good? I know we're kind of taking the negative approach on it. Maybe somebody can take the positive approach and prove us wrong. Good luck. Um... <laughs> I mean, there are positive points to make. I just yeah, think definitely. they're far outweighed by the negatives. 100% agree. With that, we come to our last segment, guys. Our Kraken Packs, uh, Rivals of Ixalan, really ready for Dominaria. But we do have our goal cards. Mine is Nezahal, the Primal Tide. Galta, the Primal Hunger. She's in this one. I can feel it. Nezahal's not in this one. I don't know that. But I'm going to say that. Nope, didn't get it, but I like the card. Yeah, I didn't get it either. Not for limited, but... I don't really like my card. You might. I'll show it to you in a second. We'll see. Go ahead and go through your pack. Cool. I have my pick already. Do you? (laughs) Dead I brought (laughs) That was really quick. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this pack isn't too good. Uh, I got Till and Ollie's uh, summon, Summoner, by the way. The oh, heck to the yes. I think that's what oh. I'd take here, too, because I just don't have anything all that exciting. Um, So it's between Dead Eye Brawler and Impale, but Dead Eye Brawler was a permanent, so Dead Eye Brawler. Okay. Um, it just gives me a reason to try and go Ascend. It's also a 2-4 four for 4, which is fine. It's got Death Touch. It's also a Pirate. Also a Pirate. Yep. There's uh, Daring Buccaneers also in here, which is a great card if you want to go in that Pirate's direction, but only if you want to go in that Pirate's direction. So Something I want to mention, though, um, that people, I think, often don't think about too much when drafting. Mm -hmm. So in that instance, your pick was what again? Dead Eye Brawler. Dead Eye Brawler. So that was going to be your pick. Mm -hmm. Impale is clearly also first pickable because it's a removal spell. Exactly. That's just normal. Um, so things to think about when you're drafting, if you take one card, be aware of the other cards that the next person are going to be considering. In this case, Impale is in there. You're putting them in black, theoret- you're potentially putting them in black, sure. which is a color that you're also now in because of the Dead Eye Brawler. Yeah. So, and I'm not saying that's a bad pick by any means, because it's not, no, no, I would no, definitely yeah. agree with you on that pick. I'm just saying be very hyper aware of uh, the pick order for certain things because if you're especially at a GP or competitive format in any way um, a lot of other players are going to be thinking about those things and you need to be aware of what colors people on either side of you are in so you can know what to expect out of your packs and actually draft correctly Um, it's very easy to kind of be like oh I want this and then just pigeonhole yourself into it before it's actually clearly the right pick right my that sounds really ultimatum-y. Uh, I'll say that. Um, but you're right. So uh, Might not be explaining it well either. <laughs> no, I mean, your point is absolutely valid. And, I mean, people talk about it before. Um, yeah. It's, you take the cues from the draft, right? Yes. Um, so if you put your player to the left in, in black, coming around, if they are still in black, like if they took Impale. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> if there's nothing else that they would want. Which there really isn't. No. Um... There's not a ton because at at pick two you can still you can pick anything. Yeah. Um, depending on what they first picked. Now they might have jumped straight into Merfolk. Maybe so. They might not get it. Yeah. Um, they might not get Impale, but I mean it's something to consider. Yeah. Always. Just something to think about. That's all. Um, yeah. I just wanted to bring yeah. that up because that was a good example of it. Totally. Um. Anyway, guys, uh, also just want to mention once again, 
our giveaway going on. If you would like to enter, make sure you follow us on Instagram, repost the actual giveaway post and tag us in it. Uh, we'll get that notification and add you to the list. We've already got, we're recording this the day that we released it, which is Sunday. We've already got like 40 people in it. Uh, it's only been a few hours. So get you guys are killing good. it. Um, so make sure you enter. Make sure uh, you get your chance at four free booster packs of Masters 25. The best set in the world. Ooh, I'm going to so impale I... this conversation right now. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to summon her to and... <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to... Okay. What, what have you got? <laughs> you ready for this? Yeah. I'm going to... Shatter your expectations for the outro and recover mm. before we plummet. Too late. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode of It Resolves. If you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like or a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe uh, and turn the little bell icon on. That way you get all the notifications about all of our content, including Cracker Packs and the podcast series and other stupid things that we do on video. So without further ado. Sponsored by Taco. I'm just kidding. We're not in any way. Guys, my name's Kevin. My name's Will. This has been It Resolves.